Have you ever had a Christmas tree in your home? Do you know where the idea of a Christmas tree comes from? Well, hi there, Reader Adventure. <laughs> Welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are gonna read about the first ever Christmas tree. <laughs> the story comes to us from the book, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, written by the same author as The Wizard of Oz, L. Frank Baum. Let's get started. Claus had always kept his promise to the Nooks by returning to the Laughing Valley before daybreak. But only the swiftness of his reindeer has enabled him to do this, for he travels all over the world. He loved his work, and he loved the brisk night ride on the sledge and the gay tinkle of the sleigh bells. On that first trip with the 10 reindeer, only Glossy and Flossy wore bells, but each year thereafter, for eight years, Claus carried presents to the children of the Gnome King. And that good-natured monarch gave him in return a string of bells after each visit. So that finally, every one of the ten reindeer was supplied. And you can imagine <laughs> what a merry tune the bells played as the sledge sped over the snow. The children's stockings were so long that it required a great many toys to fill them. And soon, Claus found that there were other things besides toys that children love. So he sent some of the fairies, who were always his good friends, into the tropics, from which they returned with great bags full of oranges and bananas, which they had plucked from the trees. And other fairies flew to the wonderful valley of Funnyland, where delicious candies and bonbons grow thickly on all the bushes, and returned laden with many boxes of sweets for the little ones. These things Santa Claus, on each Christmas Eve, placed in the long stockings together with his toys, and the children were glad to get them. You may be sure. <laughs> There are also warm countries where there is no snow in the winter time. But Claus and his reindeer visited them as well as the colder climates. For there were little wheels inside the runners of his sledge, which permitted it to whoosh, run smoothly over bare ground, just like in the snow. And the children who lived in the warm countries learned to know the name of Santa Claus, as well as those who live near to the Laughing Valley. Once, just as the reindeer were ready to start on their yearly trip, a fairy came to Claus and told him of three little children who lived beneath a rude tent of animal skins on a broad plain where there were no trees to be seen. Hmm, these poor babies were miserable and unhappy for their parents neglected them sadly. Claus resolved to visit these children oh, oh, before oh. he returned home. And during his ride, he picked up the bushy top of a pine tree, which he'd broken off and placed it in his sledge. It was nearly morning when the deer stopped before the lonely tent where the poor children lay asleep. Claus at once planted a bit of the pine tree in the sand and stuck many candles over all the branches. Then he hung some of the prettiest toys on the tree and as well as several bags of candies. It did not take long to do all this for Santa Claus works quickly. And when all was ready, he lighted the candles and thrusted his head in the opening of the tent and shouted, Merry Christmas, little ones. <laughs> With that, he leapt onto his sledge and was out of sight before the children rubbing their eyes from their sleep, could come out of the tent to see who had called them. You can imagine the wonder and joy of those little children who had never in their lives known a real pleasure before. For when they saw the tree sparkling with lights and shone brilliant and gray and hung with toys, <laughs> enough to make them happy for years, 
they joined hands and danced around the tree, shouting and laughing until they were obliged to pause for a breath. And their parents also came to look out and with wonder. And thereafter, they had more respect and consideration for their children since Santa Claus had honored them with such beautiful gifts. The idea of the Christmas tree pleased Claus. And so, the following year, he carried many of them ho, into ho, his sledge ho. and set them up in the homes of poor people who seldom saw trees and placed candles and toys on their branches. Of course, he could not carry enough trees in one load for all who wanted them. But in some homes, the fathers were able to get trees and have them all ready for Santa Claus when he arrived. And these the good claws always decorated as prettily as possible and hung them with toys enough for all the children who came to see the lighted tree. These novel ideas and the generous manner in which they were carried out made all the children long for that one night in which their friend Santa Claus would visit them. And as such, anticipation is very pleasant and comforting for the little ones who glean much happiness by wondering what would happen when Santa Claus next arrived. Perhaps you remember from our earlier stories the Baron Braun, who once drove Santa Claus from his castle and forbade him to visit his children. Well, many years afterward, when the old Baron was dead and his son ruled in his place, the new Baron Braun came to the house of Claus with his train of knights and pages and henchmen and dismounted from his charger, bared his head humbly before the great friend of children. My father did not know your kindness and worth, he said, and therefore threatened to hang you from the castle walls. But I have children of my own who long for a visit from Santa Claus, and I have come to beg you with favor for them hereafter to visit them as you do other children. Claus was pleased with this speech for Castle Braun was the only place he never visited. And he gladly promised to bring presents to the Baron's children the next Christmas Eve. The Baron went away contented, and Claus kept his promise faithfully. Thus did this man, through very goodness, conquer all the hearts of people, and it's no wonder he was forever merry and gay, for there was no home in the wide world where he was not welcomed more royally than any king. And that is the story of the first Christmas tree. Wow! Did you know about the history of the Christmas tree? I sure didn't. <laughs> For more holiday fun, check out our other videos. Merry Christmas! And until our next video, happy story time! Bye!